Hi, in this video, I'll show you how to do two things in solving a differential equation using power series. I'll show you how to shift the index so that the several series could be combined. And number two, I'll show you how to match coefficients and get a recurrence relation out of the power series solution. So a quick brief summary of power series solution. Um, in solving a differential equation with a power series, we check and make sure that the conditions are met to assume that a series solution exists. Then we assume that the answer or the solution to the differential equation is of the form of a power series such as this one, y equals sum of cn x to the power n starting with n equals zero going all the way to infinity. So a typical power series, a typical Taylor series centered at zero. You can also center it somewhere else, but in this video, I'll just assume that we're centering at zero. Well, from this y function, we can get y prime and y double prime and all the higher derivatives of y by differentiating term by term and there's a theorem in your course that shows you when you can do it. Then the first derivative y prime will be equal to the series of n c sub n x to the n minus one because you were differentiating term by term and then differentiate this again, you will end up with y double prime is a series of n times n minus one times c n x to the n minus two. And notice that the y prime series starts with n equals one because the C naught term in the original series differentiates to zero, so it's gone from Y prime, so it starts with C1. Well, that C1 term, if you differentiate again, it's gone again, so the, the Y double prime series starts with N equals two. So once you have that, you plug them into your differential equation, and you work out the algebra, and again, you assume that you can distribute all the uh, multiplications term by term throughout the series, and you arrive at an equation in terms of power series. And that's where this video starts. All right, suppose we arrive at this equation, that after we've done all the manipulation, all the calculus, and all the algebra, we have this equation in terms of power series. We would like to combine these two series into one big series, one big power series, so one single x to the power n, and then we work with that single series. But we have two problems. One problem is a small problem. The small problem is that the two series start at two different n. Well, that's a small problem because I can solve it like this. For this second series that starts with n equals zero, I'm gonna write out the n equals zero term. You'll be equal to c naught times x to zero um, plus the n equals one term. And then the rest of them will be starting at two. Then yeah, now I have a series that starts at two and so is the other series. The starting point is an issue I do have to deal with, but it's a small problem easily solved. The bigger problem is if I just put the two inside of the series together, I have different powers of X. And when I have different powers of X like that, and I put together, I have something X to the N minus two and something else X to the N. I have this big series and it doesn't help me. It doesn't look like one single new power series. Okay, I have two power series. I want to combine them together into one new single power series. If all I do is to save time on writing the sigma symbol, it doesn't help me at all. That's the problem and that's the point of this video. What I'll do is what they call to shift the index, which is this N here. I change N so that the two powers of X become the same. Right now, the two powers of X don't look the same, but they really are the same. Because let's see how these series start. Let's take the back series first. This series starts with C naught X to the zeroth 
plus c1 x to the first plus c2 x squared plus etc. How about this one? This one starts with two times one times c2 x to the zeros because two minus two is zero. And then the next term is n equals three and that is three times two times c3 x to the three minus one is x to the first. So even though the exponents are written differently, n for the later series, n minus two for the earlier series, but they really are the same. They both start with x to the power zero, followed by x to the power one, followed by x to the power two, etc. So they really are the same, they just look different. Well, since they are the same but look different, my goal is to make them look the same. Okay, I'm not changing anything mathematically, I'm just changing the looks of things. And the reason why they look different is because each of these letter n only has a meaning within its own series. This n here has its meaning within this series. This n here represents a number. We call it an index, an index that starts at zero, then followed one, two, three, etc. This n here has a meaning within this series. It's an index that starts two, three, four, five, even though the power is n minus two and it's really zero, one, two, three. So the n, the index is what we call a dummy variable. The meaning of it changes from one series to the next. In this first series, it's an index that starts at two. In the second series, as a separate index that starts at zero, it just happens to look like a letter n, but it's not the same letter n. And since it is just a dummy variable, I can just change it anytime I want. All right, so there are two ways of doing it, a fast way and a slow way. And most people will be able to shift index using the short way, the quick way. But I will also show you a slower way, a longer way, so that conceptually you come to accept that the short way is mathematically correct. Here's the short way. I want this power to look the same as that power. I want the n minus two to become a new n. I want this power x to be written in x to the power n, where n is gonna be a new number, a new dummy variable. Okay, so I just rename the power as n. What happens to the rest of the power series? Well, there's a C, there's a factor C. It used to be C subscript N using the old letter N. Now in this new letter N, what should the subscript of the letter C? Well, this old subscript was two more than the N minus two. It was up to from the exponent. So it should still be up to from the exponent. The new exponent is now n, so the subscript of c should now be n plus 2. How about this n minus 1? n minus 1 is up 1 from the exponent. Well, the exponent is now n, so this factor should be n plus 1, so that it's still up 1 from the exponent. And then comes this letter n. This letter n was up two from the exponent. The exponent is now n, so it should be n plus two. So the first series, it used to be the old letter n, now it's a new letter n, that is the exponent of x, and it is an integral. It is a summation from something to infinity. Well, hmm, there's a letter n there, so I have to worry about it. Well, it used to be the old n 
the series starts at x to the n minus 2, which is x to the 2 minus 2, which is x to the 0. So the exponent should start with 0. Well, the new exponent is now n, and it should also start at 0. We don't want to change the series. We just want to change the look of, of the series. If it used to start at 0, it should still start at 0. So that means I'm starting with n equals 0. This is n equals 0. So now I successfully shifted the index of the first series from a power n minus 2 to power n which will allow me to merge with the second series. All right, that's a short way. Now, some of you may be unconvinced that this is mathematically legit, okay? Because you may think, well, it was n minus two, how can it be n now? So I'm gonna go the long way just to justify mathematically that this is legitimate math. All right, the long way is this. I want the first series to look like the second series. And in the second series, the power of x is just a single letter, n, right? And right now in the first series, the power of x is more than just a single letter, it's n minus two. So what do I do? I substitute, I substitute m equals n minus two. Let's do the substitution. If m is equal to n minus two, then n is equal to m plus two, n minus one is equal to m plus one, and when n equals to two, m equals two minus two equals zero. Now I plug it in, just straightforward substitution, just like in algebra or calculus. Sigma symbol, n equals two means m equals zero. So I write m equals zero down here. Uh, when n equals infinity, m is also equals to infinity. So up here is still infinity. Now I move on to this factor n. Factor n becomes m plus two. Factor n minus one becomes m plus one. C subscript, subscript n is now m plus two. And then x to the power n minus two, n minus two is now m. This is my new series after I substitute in m. Well, since m is just a dummy variable, I just rename it as letter n. And now my series becomes and it is the same answer as the short way. All right, that's about shifting index. Now, what's the point of this? The point of this is that I can now rewrite the whole equation, this whole equation here, I'm gonna rewrite it with the new expression so I bring down the rest of the uh, equation. All right, now that I have my new equation, what can I do? I can combine them together. Like this. And then because they both have a common factor of x to the power n, I can factor the x to the power n out and end up with this. This is great because now it's the form of a power series, right? The power series is a summation of some factor times a power of x. So this is a new power series. Now let's go into the second topic of this video, which is matching coefficients to arrive at recurrence relation. When you have a power series like this, and it's equal to either a single number or a short a polynomial on the right-hand side, then you can think of this zero as 
zero constant term to zero, so that's a constant term, plus zero x to the first, plus zero x squared, plus et cetera. While on this side, if you think of all of these as some single coefficient, then you can think of it as some a naught x to the zeroth when n equals zero. And then when n equals one, it's some kind of coefficient a one times x to the first plus some a two x squared plus et cetera, et cetera. And then there's a theorem that says that you are allowed to match coefficients. That means that this coefficient over here has to be the same as that coefficient over there. And this coefficient over here has to be equal to that coefficient over there, et cetera. We can match coefficient. What's convenient here is that everything is equal to zero. So that means this general expression here, which is some kind of general a sub n, has to be equal to zero for all n, right? So let's write that down. Since all terms must be zero, this general expression must be equal to zero. This is an equation that relates a C term of a higher index with a C term of a lower index. From here, I can solve for C sub n plus two and get it as a relationship with C sub n. I can uh, subtract C sub n both sides and then divide by this part here. And I end up with this answer. This is called a recurrence relation because let's say if I start with C sub n is equal to C naught, then I use this one, I can calculate C2. And then once I get C2, I can apply the same formula and get C4 out of it, and then C6. So this same calculation recurs all the time, and that's why it's called a recurrence relation. Once I have the re recurrence relation, I can write the um, solution as solution is y is equal to this power series that I started with. And then I define my term C. C sub n plus two is equal to negative Cn over n plus two times n plus one. Then you say, well, what is Cn, right? Cn plus two is equal to all that. Yeah, yeah, that's great. But what is Cn? Let's think about it. How would we use this formula? We would start out with some C naught, and then we can calculate C2 from it. And then from C2, we calculate C4, C4, calculate C6, etc. All the even numbered C are fully defined as soon as we choose a C naught. C naught can be chosen arbitrarily. Aha, that makes sense because we're solving a differential equation. Solutions to differential equations always have an arbitrary constant. Here's one arbitrary constant, and this one arbitrary constant gets us all the even terms. What about the odd terms? Where would I get, I don't know, C, C5? Where would I get C5 from? Well, I would get C5 from C3. Well, where would I get C3 from? I would get C3 from C1. And there's no odd term before C1, so C1 must have been, what? An arbitrary constant. Once I have C1, I can define C3, C5, C7, et cetera, all the odd terms. Once I have C0, I can define all the even terms. Here's my fully written out solution. It's a power series. Cn x to the power n, where C not C1 are arbitrary, and then all terms higher than that can be defined by that recurrence relation. The answer that I box up is that one.
this is a perfectly good answer when solving by power series. Now, sometimes when you actually expand out the power series to all of its terms, it could be a Taylor series that you recognize. And in which case you can write it as whatever function that you recognize. In this situation, you could work all this out and you will be able to find out at, that it's an exponential function. When you could write a power series as a, a, uh, a simple function, uh, we call it writing it in closed form. But it's not always possible to write the answer to a differential equation as a power series in closed forms. Um, a lot of times, the whole reason why we had to go to power series is because a closed form solution doesn't exist in the first place. So unless someone asks you to write the answer to closed form, an answer like this is perfectly acceptable. All right, so that's the general idea of how to, number one, shift the index, and number two, match the coefficients to solve for the recurrence relation. Let's do another example. Well, you remember that last time we had an example where we have a sum with x to the power n minus two and another series with x to the n, and it's very natural to convert this into that, to convert x to the n minus two to x to the n, because it looks like a, uh, a normal power series. Whereas in this case, we have a series with a power of x that's not n, another series with a power of x that's also not n, then what do we do? Do we convert them both to n minus one? Do we convert them both to n plus two? Or do we convert them both into a new n in between? So that this first one is an x to the n and that second one is also an x to the n. Well, there's no right answer. All three approaches are perfectly good. But personally for me, I always move it to whatever series that used to be just y. Looking at this, I don't know where all of these things came from, but if someone were to tell me that this equation in power series form came from the equation y prime plus x squared y equals zero, then I would say I want to move all the index to the index of this series, the series that has y in it. That's just me, that's my preference. In reality, you do it anyway and it all the same. Now I will have decided that I will make it x to the power n plus two. So I don't touch this series, I will change this series. Last time I did the quick way first, now I'm gonna go the long way first, the slow way first. The slow way is to substitute a new variable m and then rename it later. I want a new m so that the power of x will be whatever that letter plus two. In other words, I want my new m so that m plus two is equal to n minus one. Um, that means m is equal to n minus three, n is equal to m plus three, when n equals one, m is equal to negative two. And when n equals infinity, m is also equal to infinity. So I don't need to worry about the infinity part. So having all of these, I'm gonna rewrite the first series as summation. I start with it, n equals one, and that becomes m equals to negative two. I end with infinity, the n becomes m plus three, the c sub n becomes c sub m plus three, and the x to the power n minus one becomes x to the power m plus two. Once I have substituted everything, I rename the variable, I rename the index as n, and I have 
summation from n equals negative two like that. That's shifting the, in, the index the slow way. Now the fast way. The fast way is I want this new power to be n plus two. So I'm gonna write it as x to the power n plus two. I have to see before that, well, what's the uh, relation here? From here to here, I go up one from the exponent to the subscript of the letter C, I go up one. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna go up one from here, up one from n plus two is n plus three. So the subscript of C is n plus three. The factor in front is n, it's the same n. So it's also n plus three and then summation. Now what? What's the first power here? The first power here is x to the one minus one, which is x to the zero. So I want whatever number here so that I'm also starting with x to the zero. That means I need to start with n equals negative two. Either method, I got the same index shift. Now I'll copy down the rest of the equation. Now that I have the same powers of x, I can combine the two power series, except that the uh, starting points are not the same, right? When n equals negative two, I only have the first series. And then after that, when n equals negative one, I only have the first series. When n equals zero, that's when I have both series. This is a problem, but, but it's a small problem because now I can just separate out the first few terms. At the beginning, n equals negative two. Well, when that happens, I only have the first series. So let's write down what that term is. That, that term is negative two plus three times C sub negative two plus three times X to negative two plus two, which is C to the one X to the zero, which is just C one plus the second term. The second term of series is when n equals negative one. When n equals negative one, again, I only have the first series. I have negative one plus three, c sub negative one plus three times x to negative one plus two. And the whole thing is two c two x. And then I end up at n equals zero. And that's when I have both series. So I can now just combine them all together for all of n greater than or equal to zero. I have the series starting from zero to infinity of the first plus the second. And the x to the power n plus two factors out. So I will write my series like this, n plus three. That's from the first series. And from the second series, I have c sub n and everything is multiplied by n plus two. And the whole thing is supposed to be equal to zero. Now I can match coefficients. C1 has to be equal to zero. C2 has to be equal to zero. And then this expression inside the power se series must also be equal to zero. I can solve for C sub n plus three. And I, there it is, my recurrence relation. Well, let's see what's happening here. Let's look at the um, coefficient C. I have C naught, C1, C2, C3, four, five, six, seven, eight, etc. This is my recurrence relation. It means once I have a CN, I can compute a CN plus three. So once I have a C naught, I can compute C three. 
Once I have C3, I can compute C6. And once I have C6, I can compute C9. No problem. What about C1? Yeah, once I have C1, I can compute C4. Once I have C4, I can compute C7, etc. But C1 is equal to zero. So that means this is equal to zero. And then all the C4, C7, C10, C13, they're all zero. C2 is also equal to zero. And that makes C5 zero. C8 is also zero, zero. C11 is also zero, etc. So my power series will end up with only C0, C3, C6, C9, etc. Well, this is a constant, C0 is a constant term. C3 would go with x cubed. C6 would go to x to the sixth. And C9 would go with x to the ninth, etc. So my series would look something like this. All of these are multiples of three. So I really should be writing my power series as C3n, x to the 3n. So I limit myself to only the powers of three. And from zero to infinity, where C0 is arbitrary and the recurrence relation is what I found up here. I box up my answer like this. This is also a situation where the solution could be written in closed form, uh, also an exponential, but that's not the scope of this video. The video is only about shift the index and finding the recurrence relation to solve. And so here it is. All right, I hope that helps. Any questions or comments, put in the comments section below. Like, share, and subscribe for more contents. And thanks for watching. Bye.